did I just take a photo? No, it's recording. Okay. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Um, what was I going to talk about again? Right. Okay, so the Victorian era has a lot of different fashion trends. Carolina Sabrowska just uploaded a video about this, which kind of inspired me. Um, when you say Victorian style, if you, if you describe something as Victorian style, that is incredibly vague. Uh, it could apply from anywhere between 1837 and 1901. Um, but Victorian fashion trends, especially sort of from the 1850s to the 18, through the 1890s, had a lot of very weird exaggerated shapes. Um, I'm gonna, let's roll the clip of, of funny Victorian exaggerated shapes. Part of it was certainly the desire to look sexy and to, I mean, like the, the childbearing hips thing, you, that comes up whenever there's some sort of strange element of women's fashion. And to a certain extent, it is true. We are, we are, have always been and still are enthralled to this shape. Um, and anything that people could do to exaggerate that, they generally would do with a few notable exceptions don't like those styles. So, so I think that is certainly part of it. Um, but I don't think that that is the key part. I, that's not the key reason for why it took off in the Victorian era and why it became so ubiquitous for women to wear hoop skirts in the 1850s and 60s and bustles in the 1870s and 80s and the sleeve supports. There are actually, I'm gonna see if I can find a picture advertisements for what they called sleeve bustles uh, in the 1890s. And they're essentially these wire frames that you would wear on your shoulders to support your sleeve. Um, so I think that that has another reason behind it. Um, and that is what I want to talk about. This wasn't the first time in history that women and, and men had kind of modified the shapes of their bodies. But it was the first time in history when this sort of body shape modification was available to the masses because in all of the pictures that you've just seen, that was, that was fashion that was really only available to the highest, highest echelons, the, the cream of society, the, the 1%, the super rich, the royals. Um, the Victorian era was the first time in history when everybody could participate in fashion. And it got quite crazy. So what I want to talk about today is why. Why did uh, women in the 1850s and 60s wear those the hoop skirts? Why did they wear the bustles and the, the huge sleeves? Why did why did corsetry become such a big a big thing, such a prevalent thing? Um, and if there is really, if I had to sum up why I think all of this happened in one word, that word would be industrialization. Uh, it was during the Victorian era. The Industrial Revolution started before the Victorian era, but it was during the Victorian era when it really took off. And you can tell, not only in their clothing, but in, in everything that the Victorians used and, and, and wore and even ate, um, you can tell that their, their entire lives were industrialized. They were beginning to decorate their house, houses with mass-produced knickknacks. They were um, wearing mass-produced jewelry. They, they were wearing, you know, using molded celluloid instead of carved tortoise shell. They, they loved this idea of sort of tricking themselves and getting a, a bargain. 
so that so they liked finding these sort of cheap alternatives but they were also find this figuring out for the first time in history how to work with metals especially how to really work with metal in this really intricate way that could make it do a lot of things that it they hadn't been able to people hadn't been able to do with it before um one big example of this is sprung steel I'm gonna... so sprung steel since about the 1870s kind of starting in the 1870s sprung steel started to take over in 1860s and 70s sprung steel started to take over from from whale bone in corsets as corset boning um it was also used to support crinolines and um bustles and also to support the giant sleeves in the 1890s. Um, this was something that was invented in the Victorian era. Another one is the metal eyelet that allowed corsetry to really take off for the masses. They, this was not a technology that existed before the Victorian era. Um, before the Victorian era, corsets and stays and bodies were had uh, hand-stitched eyelets which meant they couldn't be, not only could they not be laced as tightly, but they also wore out much, much more quickly. Um, so they, they had all of this new technology and they were, they almost went a little bit crazy with it. They, they, they had the ability to do these things on massive scales that they, they had never been able to be done before. Um, you can also see that with the hairstyles, uh, hairpins, Metal hairpins like this were invented in the 1500s, I believe it was the 1550s, but they're expensive and they were a luxury item. In the 19th century, you could make these easily and you could make them cheaply. And that meant that hairdos became much more elaborate. Um, so it was, it was really, this sort of age of, of experimentation and and excitement about all of these new technologies and these new abilities that they had uh, it's an age that I would I would actually compare to the Elizabethan era the age of exploration when they when they put all of these bizarre ingredients into their foods and and had all of these sort of like just all of these kind of bizarre trends that were influenced by world exploration and the discovery of new continents. Um, it's the same thing with the Victorian era, except they, it wasn't new continents, it was new technologies and, and new, new ideas. Um, and you can, you can see this in so many, in so many things. Whenever there was a new technology invented, something would be named after it, usually a plant. It's like when they invented the telephone, they were really excited, so they named a P after it. And Victorian fashion, Victorian clothing, actually in some ways feels a lot more modern to me than 21st century clothing. Because 21st century clothing does embrace the natural silhouette more. We, we don't use padding and stuffing and, and cage supports and, and corsets. I mean, we, we do some, some people, corsets are more common nowadays than you might think, but we don't alter the natural form as much as they did back then. We don't incorporate as much metal and as much um, sort of pushing and prodding now as we did then. Um, so in that way, Victorian clothing feels a lot more, a lot more modern. It feels to me as though it's embraced modern technology much more than, than, than 21st century clothing has in certain ways. So this was a brief video. Um, I do have ideas for other videos. I've just got to uh, stop being lazy and make them. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little rant. Uh, I hope that it was informative. Uh, Bye.